What's up guys, so welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, something that you guys are not accustomed to on the channel and that is a commentary man, I usually don't sit here and do commentaries and stuff like that, it's usually live stuff but anyways, hopefully you guys can bear with me until the end of the video because I'm not necessarily the best at doing these I don't know what it is, I just can't sit here and talk to my mic, it's, it just seems weird I I don't know, man. So in today's video, I'll be checking out a game called Ironsight, which is a free-to-play FPS game currently in beta. Now, this video is sponsored by Ironsight themselves. If you guys want to check out the link to the game, like I said, it's free. So you guys can click the link down below, download the game, and check it out yourselves. But before we actually get into today's video, I want to let you guys know I've never done a video like this on the channel. So you guys let me know your opinions down below if you guys like videos like this or if you don't mind them. Because I'm always open to, you know, trying new stuff, building my brand, and trying new games that I personally like because this game has so many factors in it that makes me feel nostalgic about games that I've played in my past. Alright, so just a quick disclaimer before we get any further in this video, I'm going to let you guys know the gameplay in the background is probably not going to be that good. I'm not that good at using a keyboard and mouse through my 8 or 9 years of playing video games. I've always used a controller. And in this game, it doesn't directly support controllers. It only allows you to use keyboard and mouse. I'm going to be struggling throughout the video. It's not the game that's bad, it's me. So I just wanted to make sure you guys do understand that. So anyways, let's talk a little bit more about Ironsight. Ironsight has multiple different maps and modes that you guys can play. Just a couple different modes that you guys can choose from is Team Deathmatch, Secure Point, Frontline, Search and Destroy, and Resource Takeover. You guys are seeing Frontline gameplay right now, and uh, the description for Frontline, it says to win, you must occupy and defend two points. So it's kind of like a Domination and Demolition had a baby and created this game mode. I actually really like playing this game mode, and it was a ton of fun playing, but that's it for the modes. Some of those modes you guys are going to be pretty familiar with from Call of Duty and stuff like that. So now let's hop into the map. So as you guys know, with every single FPS game and multiplayer game in general, the maps must be good in the game for you to enjoy it and have a fun time. If the maps aren't colorful, vibrant, and have good flow, you're not going to enjoy playing the game. Let's be honest here, you're not going to enjoy the game. And Ironsight did a great job in designing the maps. The maps are colorful, vibrant, they have really good flow, and most of them are three lanes. Like certain maps, they'll, they'll change up a little bit once you get to a certain area. They'll not necessarily be three lanes. But most of the maps are three lanes and they flow really, really good. You're not always getting killed by random directions that you have no idea where the enemy came from, which is a very, very good thing. But like I said, there's periodical changes and interactive elements. So for example, of a periodical change, that could be like, you know, a train coming through the map. You hop on the train, you cross the train, and then you go on the other side of the map. Or maybe an airplane crashed into the map or a sandstorm coming in. It does change the layout of the map as well. So you guys need to be on the lookout and make sure you guys are aware when those events are actually coming in because it could possibly kill you. All right, guys, so let's talk weapons. So there's so many weapons in this game that I felt nostalgic about when I first hopped on. I was like, really? This gun is in this game? There's no way. It's like a mix and match of all my favorite games in one game. It's crazy, man. When I was just going through these weapons, I felt all sorts of nostalgic memories and stuff like that. So let's quickly go through a few big names that are actually in this weapon list that you can use in-game. So we got the AK-12, we got the FAMAS, the M4, the AUG, the AK-47, we got the ARX, 160 we got the scar h we got the tar 21 the msbs the an 94 the mp7 p90 pp90 the mp5 vector there's so many classic weapons on this list dude. it's crazy the dsr the psg1 we also have the mk46 we got a bunch of classic weapons in this game that are definitely nostalgic when you use them uh so for attachments you can choose three different attachments on your weapon i'm not going to necessarily go through those but i just want to let you guys know you can have three different attachments on your weapons for secondary weapons we got like you know the python the desert eagle the spash 12 so you can actually have shotguns as your secondary weapon then we also have the combat crossbow and a few long so when it comes to melee weapons in this game, you have the Karambit Knife and you have the Tactical Axe. You have to purchase the Tactical Axe, but the Karambit Knife comes free because it's a base knife in the game. Later in the video, we'll talk more in depth when it comes to knifing, but as of right now, I just want to go over your loadouts and stuff that you can choose from. When it comes to lethal, you have an explosive knife, you have a frag grenade, a throwing knife, a throwing axe, sticky grenades, remote bombs, spring mines, and claymores. So pretty much stuff that you guys are pretty accustomed to seeing in the past. So in this game, just like Call of Duty, you have kill streaks, but in this game, they're called drones. And when you actually earn your drones, it's by getting score. It doesn't matter if you die or not. As long as you're getting score throughout the game, you'll eventually earn your drones or whatever kill streaks you have, as long as you get that amount of score in the game. So if you put on those high kill streaks, you'll eventually get your high kill streaks as long as you play throughout the game and build up that score to actually get them. All right, so hopping into the tactical drones, man, we got the Stalker, then we have the UAV Recon, we have the LAWS, we have the Spy Drone, we have the Jammer Drone, the Observer Drone, 
the Storm Shield, the UAV Jammer, the Gorgon System, and the Zeus. So hopping into the offensive drones, we have the Crawler, the Blade Drone, the Escort Drone, the Firefly, the Striker Drone, Hellbird, and the Metal Reaper. So one streak that I really want to talk about is the Hellbird. This one reminds me of the Chopper Gunner so much from BO1. I don't know why it does, but it just does. It gives me that nostalgic feeling, but obviously it's going to have a counter. Every single streak in this game or drone in this game has a counter and it can be shot down easily if you know what you're doing. So let's hop into skills. So you can only choose one skill from each tier and you have three different tiers that you can choose from. So in the first tier you have Nimble Hands, Quick Aim, Quick Reload, Balance, and Quick Switch. The second tier you have Marathon, Magazine Pouch, Double Time, and Feather Steps. And in the third tier you have Assassin, Blast Protection, Drones, long ears and quick recovery so now it's time to hop into the item shop so as you guys know with every single free to play fps game or any free to play game in general mobile games stuff like that most of the good stuff in the game are hid behind paywalls or supply drops or stuff like that in this game nothing is hid behind supply drops you're not going to find some battle obsidian steed in your supply drops literally everything behind the drops are cosmetic only camos and stuff like that which is a great thing i love the system in this game I wish Call of Duty would adopt this system, but unfortunately, I don't think they will. So let's take a look at the item shop. So as you guys can see, there's multiple different types of boxes down here. And some of these, you have to use currency in the game that you actually have to purchase. But some of the ones you can actually earn. Like, for example, like chips or GP, you can actually earn those by playing the game. So you don't actually have to purchase these. But just for an example, so you guys see, I have 28,000 GP at the top of the screen. I'm going to go ahead and purchase a regular supply box. Just so you guys can know that you don't have to actually buy these with the actual money. You can actually buy these by just grinding in the game you know it could just be a common item but you only get one thing out of your supply box at a time so they also have a little section here called extra supplies now this is where you can get free stuff as you guys can see right here i open it up and i got a free 100 gp and you can get those every 20 minutes and you have a maximum amount of three per day there's also one called chip funding. I opened this yesterday, so unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to show it in this video, but you can open up one of these just like the GP funding box and you can get some chip currency. So that's pretty much it for the item shop, but like I said, it's all cosmetic items. So now it's time to talk about all things knifing in iron sight. So I actually went through all the assault rifles and all the secondaries. There is no tactical knife and no bayonet, unfortunately, but there is a melee weapon slot as you guys seen earlier. Alright guys, so let's hop into melee weapons. So there's two melee weapons in this game. We have the Karambit Knife and we have the Tactical Axe. So the Karambit Knife is the base knife in the game and it also has a gold version of it as well. But to unlock the gold version, you have to get a thousand kills with the Karambit Knife. And then once you get a thousand kills, you unlock the ability to buy it and you have to use 80,000 GP to unlock it. By then, you should have 80,000 GP saved up and you should be good. And the same is for the Tactical Axe as you can see right there. It has a gold version of it as well. So hopping into lethals. So we have the throwing axe, the throwing knife, and the explosive knife. The throwing axe and the throwing knife both stick into walls if you throw them at the wall. So you won't bank off the wall and stuff like that. Usually the throwing axe banks off the wall, but in this game it doesn't th bank off the wall at all. And neither does the throwing knife. The throwing knife and the throwing axe work exactly the same. Except the throwing axe has a little bit longer of an animation. Now the explosive knife, when you hit your target, it doesn't explode on impact. You hit your target and then a few seconds later, it blows your enemy up and it also blows up the surrounding area as well. So any enemies around them will also get blown up too. So it's kind of like the explosive throwing knife from IW. So now let's hop into a perk that is actually made for knifing in this game, and it is called Assassin. That is the perfect name for this perk. It increases the melee weapon's accuracy by 10% and extends reach by 15%. So this perk is definitely not on the level of Commando by any means, shape, or form, but it's definitely a cool perk to use, especially when you're trying to knife. I don't think it's overpowered at all. I was running around playing with it, and I did about the same when I wasn't using it compared to when I was using it. But I did notice at certain times I did get some crazy crazy lunges compared to when I wasn't using it, which is understandable since it extends the range by 15%. But there's no teleporting in this. You don't teleport dimensions when you go lunge at somebody like you do with Commando. All right, guys, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for the knifing in this game, man. I love that we have three different options under the lethal category that definitely does give us some variety when it comes to knifing in the game because usually we're just stuck with one under that category. Overall, I really do like knifing in this game. It has some pretty decent hit detection and some really cool animations and variety. But we're going to have to wait until it comes to console or they decide to add controller features on the game. As of right now, you have to use mouse and keyboard, and I'm not necessarily the best with those. 
But anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. Don't forget to check out the link down below to download Iron Sight for free. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.